Tanks and other heavy armored vehicles provided deadly firepower. Infantry units usually marched on foot or rode in trucks, leaving them vulnerable. They moved slowly and often were forced to fight after an exhausting march. The army wanted to protect its infantry better and so created the armored personnel carrier. One of the most modern versions was first used in Vietnam. The speedy, versatile M113 proved an effective troop carrier, but its aluminum armor was easily breached by landmines. It was also no match against enemy tanks, artillery, or rocket-propelled grenades. Introduced in 1981, the Bradley fighting vehicle has much thicker armor and more offensive capability than the M113. Carrying a crew of three and up to six infantrymen, it proved itself in the first Gulf War, destroying more Iraqi vehicles than even the Abrams tank. But the Bradley's strength also creates limitations. It's too large and heavy to be transported aboard most military aircraft. It's loud, and it's limited in speed and range, ruling out a quick, stealthy response. To deal with 21st century threats, the Army needed a vehicle that combined heavy weaponry with the mobility of lighter vehicles. To bridge the gap, they developed the Striker. They can bring a lot of capability to various areas very quickly, so I think wherever they deploy, it'll probably be with that in mind, and they have great, what we call, tactical mobility. But for the Army, the Striker was more than a new vehicle. It was the product of a dramatic shift in military strategy. The world before the Striker, we walked everywhere, uh, carried everything we carry on our backs, and uh, you reason pretty tired when you got there. With the Striker, it gets you there so fast, so quick, that you just pull up to the front door, drop the ramp, and conduct business. When you're done with the mission, get back on and take off. It's just that good. All of these advantages make the Striker a perfect tool for commanders facing new battle scenarios. The Striker uh, concept is about a, a new way of fighting. That way of fighting is to see the enemy first before he sees us. And we have equipment that allows us to do this. Then understand the situation first. The systems that are on these strikers allow every soldier in our formation to understand what the situation is. Then to act first, uh, to maneuver out of contact and strike the enemy from a point of advantage and finish decisively. So that's kind of our operational paradigm. That's what the striker brigade concept is all about. Working as a cohesive unit, striker brigade combat teams integrate large-scale maneuvers with boots-on-the-ground tactics. Striker units typically operate as a company with three infantry platoons of four vehicles each. Depending on the mission, commanders can deploy a custom mix of 10 striker variants. There's an 80% commonality between the variants, keeping maintenance and support costs relatively low. But for all they have in common, each striker has a distinct role in the brigade. The main striker model is the ICV, or infantry carrier vehicle. Its primary job is to take soldiers to the fight. Company commanders travel in a command variant, filled with specialized communications gear. A fire support vehicle is equipped with laser designation capabilities for precision artillery or airstrikes. Go, go, go! The striker mortar carrier brings lethal indirect fire support to the battlefield. The reconnaissance vehicle provides surveillance and intelligence, while an NBC recon vehicle detects nuclear, biological, and chemical weapons. To clear mines and eliminate traffic obstacles, the engineer variant is equipped with a large plow.
When bullets start to fly, injuries often result. The medical evacuation vehicle acts as an armored ambulance that can transport as many as six patients from the battlefield. And if the army comes up against armor or fortified positions, the brigade can send in two additional striker variants that bring heavy firepower to the fight. The ATGM, or anti-tank guided missile striker variant, is outfitted with a hammerhead missile launcher and the deadly TOW-2 missile system. The TOW-2 can successfully destroy targets with 30-inch armor at ranges of up to 4,000 meters or more than two miles. Identified! Bar! On the way! The ATGM striker is loaded with 18 rounds of different TOW-2 missiles used for engaging heavily armored vehicles or for bunker busting missions. A second anti-tank variant, the Stryker Mobile Gun System, is outfitted with a 105 millimeter cannon, the same gun used on the M1 Abrams tank. This provides Stryker Brigade combat teams with fire on the move anti-armor capability. Each ICV striker carries a vehicle commander, a driver, and the vehicle's troop of nine infantrymen. The driver's seat is in the most protected part of the vehicle, to the front left of the hull. His controls for maneuvering the vehicle are like a regular automobile's. Driving this vehicle is a lot like driving a big truck or a big, or a big Cadillac, really. It's got a steering wheel, gas pedal, and brake pedal, just like your home car, your gear shift knob, just like a car, your gauges that display, you know, your miles per hour, RPM, fuel, and all that, just like a vehicle. And the difference is, this is able to drive, it's armored, it'll go anywhere I want it to, and it'll take a rough beating. Striker drivers see the road either through three periscopes or through an advanced thermal sight, the driver's visual enhancement. What it is, it's a thermal image projected from a camera that we got here next to me. And what it does is it projects a thermal image of what's in front of the vehicle. That's basically all I see. I use this at nighttime during a tactical situation when I'm driving and I can't use my headlights, but I still need to be able to see where I'm going, so it'll project that thermal image in front of me. Kind of like driving an arcade video game. Drivers are central to the combat team's operations, ensuring the vehicle's working condition before it leaves and mapping out their exact route. The driver works hand in hand with the vehicle commander, who occupies the front right station in the main hull. Staff Sergeant Darland has been a vehicle commander with the 3rd Brigade for over two years. We help control the battle with speed, with uh, communication on the battlefield to keep our connectivity between units. And my job and my role within that unit is to make sure that the platforms never go down and we always have connectivity between the company commander and the battalion commander. The striker vehicle itself gives us so much more capabilities inherent in that role. The advanced communication technology on the striker gives vehicle commanders a full picture of the battlefield. The vehicle commander monitors two radios in the infantry variant. Uh, one is usually a platoon net and one is usually a company net. So he has situational awareness and is able to push that information so everybody knows what's going on. 725, 725, 733, over. When on the move, the vehicle commander stands up in his hatch to survey his surroundings and help the driver negotiate 